The code of practice for SEN has changed from today. Um, the, legal, the legal stuff has changed, so I just want to bring you very quickly, very short little summary of what, how that affects you, because it does affect every member of staff, so there are a few things. And then, uh, as the term progresses, there will be more detail we will need to get out to you as things go on. Um, just a little bit, we are slightly ahead of the Rob in that I think we've got a, a sheet going around for people to sign who are actually at this talk because it's very important that you sign that you've attended this so you, we know you are up to date with safeguarding. If you're a new member of staff, we'll also be in contact with you as part of your induction to have more detail on safeguarding as well. Okay? Right. Okay. Hopefully it won't take you too long because I know we are behind, so I'll try and do this as quick as we can. Um, first of all, safeguarding. Um, very proud of our staff on safeguarding. Uh, we have a great team uh, of DS, what's now called DSLs, it used to be DSPs, but they're now DSLs, working across every campus in the, uh, across the academy. We have, uh, so every, wherever, whichever campus you're in, there is a trained DSL, a designated safeguarding lead, who you can see at any time. I'll talk to you more about that in a second. Um, we were uh, during the Ofsted inspection, although it didn't end up in the final report, which is very disappointing from my point of view. The guy who interviewed us basically said our procedures and um, methods of working for safeguarding are exemplary. So we're very pleased with that. And that also I know because of the way people come and see us, there is a very open culture about safeguarding here. And people are very happy to come and talk to other members of staff and discuss things, which is, which is the absolute key thing. Talk about it. If you're not sure, talk about it to people. Um, who are on, we'll talk, I'll show you in a minute who the people are. Okay. I'm also very proud of you as a staff because I came to the meeting with Stuart at his presentation about uh, the staff questionnaire last year and 99% of you said you understood the safeguarding procedures in school. So obviously something went in, well done. Let's hope we'll um, bring up the 1% of you in this session. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, first of all, academy staff, you can see they have child protection training every three years. I know the primary staff down at Osprey Key last year, you had in November 2013, you all brought up to date then and you did some exercises and things. Uh, the repeat of that is going to happen for secondary in uh, around November. I think we've actually got a date now in October, end of October, when that will happen. And it's because the three years up for secondary staff as well. If anybody in the primary staff missed the session last year, you'll need to come to this one to bring up your training. Um, okay, um, just to put the whole thing a little bit in concept, context, um, we do have quite a high proportion of uh, safeguarding concerns in this school compared with perhaps your average, and it is something to bear in mind. Um, last year we had 21 new cases were referred to social care, uh, which is uh, quite high. Um, Eight uh, students across the academy at the moment are subject to the child protection plan, which is the highest level of need. Uh, 21 students are currently you know, on a child and need plan, which is like the next tier down from that. But perhaps the most important thing, 136% of our students, over 10%, are known to social care, uh, which I think is, is very relevant. Um, and then we also have 13 looked after children, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, so just to, just for, particularly for new staff, but any other staff as well, just to remind you, staff involved in this, I'm the lead for Safeguarding Across the Academy, Rob is uh, the deputy. But then within that we have, and one of the things Ofsted really liked was that we have a, a large range of people who are trained as well, who we can go and see. Okay? So particularly for all the manner of staff perhaps, all the heads of house are DSL trained, and they would be your first port of call if you had an incident that you thought was going to uh, be maybe borderline or very clear cut safeguarding, it would normally be the head of house for that person you'd go and see first. Okay? I'm more than happy if you do come and see me, but uh, it should be the head of house first. It's just the workload of everybody comes and sees me, I'd be doing nothing else. So heads of house should be your first port of call. They may well come and see me and I'll talk to you about that in a sec. Um, and then at Southwell, we've got Stuart uh, and Sharon, uh, Osprey Key, Irene Carney's the lead there, Deputy is Wendy, um, and also for um, early years, Rachel Milverton is involved in that as well. Talk much 
States. Right. Um, we also have, and uh, John was talking earlier about getting governors more involved. I am absolutely very happy with the work Tim Gom has done. He, uh, who, uh, Reverend Tim Gom, is our uh, safeguarding governor, and he's in school quite. He's come and see me every half term to discuss issues. So I'm really happy with that. E-safety again. We're very hot on with uh, Gary. Sparkling and on our website, we've got places where parents can go to if they've got complaint, um, worries about safeguarding or anything on the internet, and that is used regularly by, by parents with a number of instances when that's happened. Um, and also, very important to the uh, whole structure of that, uh, Linda Seaton is in charge of um, looked after children across the academy. It's again something which has worked really, really well. One of the great benefits, I think, of having the academy structure all the way through is we looked after children. They've got one person, when they come in at five to leave at 16, who is responsible for them. And same with the foster families, they all know it's Linda. Whichever, whether they're five or whether they're 16, Linda's the person who's going to be working with them as the key person to look after children worked really, really well. In fact, we had a, a lovely letter from the county right at the end of the year saying basically that uh, our model of working for looked after children was the best within Dorset. So we're going very proud of what we do with looked after children. Uh, and also very important system, Moira, Moira Cranny, who just uh, does all the admin for all of that. And so any of the signs you see around the school, the schools, all different schools, which we've now got the same system for, wherever you go, it should look identical, whichever base you're on. Thanks to a lot of Moira's work, and also if you come to the filing of all the children's files, it's all the same wherever you go. Okay, a couple of basics. You, most of you will go, of course, I know this, but we do just want to remind you, okay? Remember, Ted, okay, if the disclosure is unclear, tell me, explain to me, describe to me. Okay, that's what you're asking children to do. If they come to you with an issue, that's what you're asking them to do. You're not pushing them off to somebody else. They've come to see you, they've come to see you for a reason. Okay, so in the first instance, you get them to tell you all about it. One crucial thing is that they don't write it down. You don't get them to write it down, you just get them to tell you about it. Okay? You might want to write some notes afterwards, so it must so it's all in your head, but just in the first instance, they just tell you about it. Never get them to write it down. Okay? Okay, go straight on. I'm going to have to start talking before it comes up. Um, what you will see, particularly for new staff, a lot of you have already done this, is that in, on every site, again, thanks to Moira, in, on the notice boards in every site, there are copies of cause for concern form forms. Okay? So if, you, if a child does come and tell you anything, what you, you need to do is to write on that form what's been said, all, anything that you feel is relevant, and then come with that form to the relevant DSL. Okay? Don't come without that form really because it's so important that the DSL can then sit with you, talk it over, discuss it and then maybe write some more notes. Don't forget though that it is possible that cause concern form might go a long way, it might be seen by outside agencies at some point. Okay? So don't just scribble it. Okay? It's got to be, it's got to be, it has got to be beautiful handwriting but it had just remember that it will be read by other people at various points if it's decided that it is a serious issue. Okay? Um, what happens then is if it's decided that actually, or the, the DSL you've come and seen thinks actually this, this ought to go to social care. So we've got a bit of consistency, not because I know more than some of the other very experienced DSLs. They will come and see me. We will discuss whether that should be a referral to social care or not. If it is, the DSL will then phone social care go through your course of concern form with them, explain the situation, and social care will take it from there. Hopefully. It doesn't always work quite as smoothly as that, but it sounds good in theory. But that's basically what will happen. Okay? Um, do be aware that it, depending on the circumstances and what it is you have, it comes to tell them, it may be not appropriate to tell the parents at that stage. Okay? So don't, if, if, parent, if, if you've heard something, this is, this is from an example this year where it didn't work very well. Make sure you come and see the DSL before you ring the parents. Because we did have one incident this year where um, somebody heard something from a child, they rung the parents, then they come to the DSL, and actually when we spoke to social care, they said, you haven't told the parents, have you? Oh, we have. Okay, so just, just think about that. I mean, normally, normally, absolutely, you want to talk to parents about issues, but it could be that actually that's part of the problem. It could be. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay? 
Um, we also have a, what's called a welfare log. It's particularly appropriate, I think, in primary. Um, it's, it's still available in secondary, but what primary, where it's not something you'd, really, you'd want to write a course for concern. <coughs> Child's come in, clothes are all dirty today. Okay? Well, social care, I'm not going to be interested in that, to be honest. Okay? But if it happened every day for two weeks, or it happened three times a week for a month, well, then you've begun to go a bit of an issue. But if you ring social care and say, oh, well, it just comes in dirty and scruffy every, well, not scruffy, but, you know, we've plastered in mud, walking clothes and never been washed. The first question I'll say is, well, how many times did that happen? When did it happen? So that's where the welfare law comes in, because you're not just going, well, it seems to happen quite a lot. Yeah? You've got actually the facts to back you up. So the welfare log is there. In the primary sector, that'll be the class teacher will run that if they think it's appropriate. Okay? At secondary, it'll be the head of house. Okay? And of course, particularly in secondary, it might be one little thing one teacher's seen, another little thing somebody else has seen, and actually, if it's all recorded in the welfare log, it suddenly comes together and goes, ooh, yeah, that's got an issue. So just something to bear in mind. Well, some things on here which we haven't really got time to go into this morning. But if you're worried about any of these, please come speak to me or any of the DSLs. Okay? Um, there was some guidance issued to you halfway through the year about one-to-one -one situations. I know that can be really difficult for some staff, but you have to bear in mind that if you're in one-to-one -one situation with another student, with a student, well, you shouldn't really be. Or at least there should be a door open where there's another member of staff just on the other side of the door or in the next room. Okay? You've got to use a bit of common sense because obviously those things do occur at, at times, but you've got to be really careful about it. Um, physical force, intimate care, social networking, we talked a lot of staff have heard a lot about it before. We're not going to go right through that now, but if you do want to talk to me, a lot of it, as it says somewhere in here, it's probably the next slide, it talks a lot about common sense. Okay? Uh, and it is about that. It is about just thinking about what you're doing. Uh, school technology is a, is a grey area, it's a difficult area at the moment. You know, one to hand with saying, well, let's put things on Facebook, let's put things on Twitter, but then you should not have pictures of students on your camera. So, you know, those two things are very difficult to square off at times, and you have to be very, very careful about it. A lot of it, Okay? It's just common sense and being able to justify your behaviour. I've had, a, I think we had, I've had three occasions last year when various members of staff came to me and said, look, I've done this. Uh, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have done it, but I want you to be aware so if anything comes up, I can say, I've come and told you, I'm well aware, I'm, I'm aware of that situation. Okay? And that just makes things much easier because if it does come and a uh, complaint from parents or something like that, we can say, I can say, they mean me, I don't know all about that, this is what happened. Okay? So if you are concerned that something, you know, maybe something's gone on Facebook you didn't mean to put on, oh no, I put that on, shouldn't have done that, okay, because so and so is a friend of so and so, rather just forget it or just try and take it off, just come and talk to us and just say, I know I've done that, can you record it so if it ever comes back up, I can say, I might have said something about it. Okay? Um, one really, uh, two, two really important points here, um, I mentioned this last year, if a student comes and tells you something, please do not leave it to tomorrow to tell somebody. Okay? You know, most people are really, really good at that, and they do make sure they get the cause of concern. But this is the top priority, if a child's told you something, it's a safeguarding issue. Whatever else is happening that day, that is the top issue. Okay? That is the priority. If it means you need to come and see me and I'll cover for you while you do your form, as I did quite a few times last year, that is fine. But it is critical it's done that day. That child goes home that night and something happens, you will be able to live with yourself. So make sure you come and tell somebody that day and we can decide how far it has to go. Okay? Don't leave it. We did have a few instances last year where sort of two days later somebody's coming to say, oh yeah, on Tuesday, it's now Friday, this happened. Not good. You put yourself in a very difficult position. The other thing is, um, I'm sure all DSLs get this, is that staff will come and talk to you, and you guys, because you're busy, you'll come and talk to us, you know, you'll grab in staff and say, oh, just have this, what do you think? 
really hard because we're all really busy, we're all running off to do various things. And people come tell you something and yeah, you might go, oh yeah, yeah. Don't really take it in as if it's filled in on the form and put presented to you. There's no arguing about that. So I'd much rather you spent a few minutes making sure it was all documented, then come and see me or your DSL. Try and avoid just sort of grabbing us in the staff room and going, I'm just a bit worried about him. Okay, there is a bit more logic as to why that is so important in a minute.